Yeah, man, it's going down. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. We got a special guest in the house, man. Listen, I first heard him on a screw tape, man. Uh, four deep, real G's roll four deep. You know what I'm saying? From four deep, man, we got class one. And hey, yeah. Guru yeah. Rob, what's going down, man? Already, man. It's a pleasure to be here, man. It's a blessing, really. It is, it is. Already, already, man. How y'all feeling, man? Blessed. I'm feeling good, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right, man. So, shit, what's new? Shit, what's going down, man? Um, on the cool, like, a lot of people probably been wondering, like, what we've been up to, uh, like, what what are we getting into new? Um, me, personally, I just got into filming, um, cool films, filming a lot of music videos, a gang of music videos, um, I've been touring with Mike Jones, uh, so I got a lot. There's a documentary that's going to come out on him, and I'm going to go ahead and um, spearhead that. It's a gang of footage. And um, we're just doing us, man. I man, Nothing really, <laughs> a lot to talk about. Class, what's, what's new, man? Man, uh, hip hop junkies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> cool and class, uncensored. Uh, podcast coming soon, the real hip hop junkies. That's what's new. Um, but yeah, man, we still here rolling 4 deep, you know what I'm saying? Like, Koo tell you what he been doing. I ain't gonna lie, man, I been in all kind of shit. <laughs> TDC, digger, or the streets, you know, but I don't never stop rapping. You For know, sure. um, and now, you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to be in a better place um, and keep on growing. Because if it don't grow, it dead, you know what I'm saying? If it ain't arena, it don't grow, if it don't grow, it dead. But that's about it, man. You know what I'm saying? I already, I already. So, man, talk about, man, how y'all even, you know, met. Like, you know what I'm saying? How y'all even came together and everything. Class, class to be able to tell you. Man, I, I can so tell you because to me, when I met Cool, he was with Big Boss. And Big Boss was one of the, my, from one of my favorite groups at the time. That was the early 90s. The group was was OG style. OG style, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, with yeah, the song, OG I know how to play him. I know how to catch him slipping. Yeah. Even that sitting in the have is kind of jail. That's OG style, you know what I'm saying? It also went on the Convicts album. Shout out to Big Mike, RIP to 3 2. 3 2. 3 2 was a legend too, you know what I'm saying? Real, real talk. We got a bunch of that story by him, you know what I'm saying? Coming back from LA after he had just um, stayed with Snoop and them. And like how he had grew and like. He was he was live. I just remember tell, that. Tell, like, me like how, how, you know tell me how he was before he went to L.A. and then how he was when he I didn't know back. him. Well, I, I seen him before he went to L.A. because I was a fan of, of um, rap a lot. Um, shout out to Jay Prince, the boss, the, for sure, the king of the side of all that shit. Um, I knew him before that from like a, a fan point of view. But when he came back, I had um, ran into Cool and Boss. Um, Actually, was riding through the parking lot of Gucci's and seeing Boss on the other side of the street on the payphone. You know what I'm saying? Cause back then, there wasn't no cell phone, so niggas would pull up <laughs> so on the phone with the bro. So you know what I'm saying? But anyway, I had just seen them niggas. I had just, before I came to Club Gucci's that evening, I had just seen a video on MTV Raps. Hmm. And them niggas um, for Catch Them Slipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they in New York on the subway, like, you know. Um, probably one of the first H time groups that you would see in New York, like was accepted because Catch Me Slipping was a on the cool, the first on the cool, the you first. Know, um, so they was they was already um, like some of my heroes or some people because I love rap a lot. I come up in H time, you know. What, what side of town both of y'all? I'm from the North, Greenspoint. I'm from the Southwest. You know what I'm saying? But I stayed all over Houston. I stayed in like Brownsville, mostly. Fondren, Bissonnette. Beach nut, the West, Bella, period, period. The every, the any and the everywhere on the north, West, you know I stayed up. And you was on the West and the North. From, uh, well, I'm from the North, from Greens Point, but I have lived and been all over Houston. I'm, I, you know, I just consider myself an East Town nigga. You know what I'm saying? But I come up in Greens Point, Goodson Road, Seminar, um, Ella Means. You know what I'm saying? I'm out there. I'm, I'm on the North. Um, but yeah, man. I, so I, I met. Um, so anyway, I was at the club that night. This is how I met Boss and Cool. And um, dipping through, I was jamming my demo. My partner had just came. One of my partners had just got shot. So I was standing in my driveway, and my partner Charles pulled up. Like, what's going on, man? Woo -woo -woo. You know what I'm saying? 
jump in, man. I said, hold on, I just made a demo. Matter of fact, let me grab it. So I grabbed a demo, jump in, boom, we shoot the Gucci. And um, we ride through the parking lot, and when we was finna leave, and I had just left out the house four hours for my partner pass by and picked me up, look at their videos, that's what I'm saying. And I saw OG style video, MTV Raps, which that's a big thing back then, 92, 90. For sure, 90, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, saying? for sure. And um, I knew who they was, I loved their album. My favorite song on their album was um, Power. On the OG style album, that was my favorite song. <laughs> but anyway, so we we pack, we we go across the parking lot. I tell my partner, man, that's OG style. Woo, woo. That nigga like he wasn't really in the hip hop like me, but he was because he had got more into the streets. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was trying to, you know, my partner had just got shot at the trap we had, so I was trying to, I was going through some. So I need to get out the street, you know what I'm saying? But still, ain't just get out of it, man. But you know, um, so anyway. Um, Boom, so I see them, so we pull up on them, and I got the demo, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, say, um, you big boss, my OG style. You know, hold on, man, you know what I'm saying? Woo, 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 click, what's up? So he come to the car, stick his head in the window, and my partner tell him, look, this is my homeboy demo, he going out, he going out, you know what I'm saying? So boss listening, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, that's, that's big boss, you know what I'm saying? He was in the beans, and um, I say, man, he say, look at me, he'll go my number, call me, woo, 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 boom. So you know, I started blowing his phone up. You know, <laughs> we just we just got cool and close. I can't. I kind of became like a protege. You know what I'm saying? Like going to the shows they was having. So I remember meeting like three, two, and um, Big Melo and different rappers because I was in the mix with him now as part of the OG style movement. You know what I'm saying? And, um, met, had met Ian and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then that, that group broke up. So long story short, that's how. Four Deep eventually came about because Boss kept producing. He was the producer of the group. He was the rapper, you know what I'm saying? Um, the group broke up, then Boss wanted to keep on, he wanted to push out a new group. So we came with Four Deep, and you know what I'm saying? That's how I met Cool. And, and that's how I got more acquainted with 3 2. Because when 3 2 came back from LA, he came and was chilling with Boss, and Boss was producing in my album, and that motherfucker was hard. Hmm. It never came out, but it, it influenced me. Motherfucker was hard, bro. But anyway, um. So tell, okay, tell me about like when you were uh, around three two and, he, and they doing his album. And all okay, now when I meet three two, he just coming back from L.A. and he got the he got braids now. <laughs> that nigga. When he left, what he had before, just like oh, he, flat he, or he, he just he still he had like he was just cut down. It was yeah, cut down. you know what I'm saying. From like when I saw him, like maybe one or two shows from like that's three two. You know what I'm saying? He had a little, little or, like, afro from seeing and him on pieces or whatever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And um, he was just G'd up, like, and his swag was, I don't know, but it ain't, it's like he went there, like, he probably went to LA, I, I think, from, and he grew, like, got gained that culture, like, back then, and it was jump, you know what I'm saying? He jumped in the mix back then, but then some of that shit rubbed off on them, too. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a balance, but anyway, but in anyway, um, so 3 2, man, when I met him, he was, um, he was live, bro, like lyric, you know what I'm saying? And he had an album, Boss was producing it. And I was supposed to get on the song with him and Big Mike. I'm like, man, that's gonna be my debut, man. Cause I have been hang <laughs> I'm paying my dues. I'm hanging around with niggas, boss feeling me. I meet three two. We drank a purple passion and shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so three cut, he started, you know, like warming up to me, you know what I'm saying, had a song for me, but that never came came about because of other situations. But man, just to say that I just, you know. 3-2 man was live, my nigga, you know what I'm saying? He, he, uh, one of the livest. One of the livest, my nigga, real talk, you know what I'm saying? I, like, I admired him and looked up to him or whatever. That nigga was, was so, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, all that, what's really going on and that big baby shit, he started saying that shit. Because he He's used to been be, saying my that. partner Big Boss was kind of, was big, he big boss, you know what I'm saying? He used to be saying, big boss, what's up, big baby? You know what I'm saying? Like, he used to be talking about, and then when he went out there and he came back, you know what I'm saying? He was telling us, like, how that shit was. Motherfucker was starting to see it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, okay, cool. So, where, where do you come in at? Uh, I used to be with Boss when I, like, when I say every day, literally every day. Yeah, he ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> he, he putting on a record just to listen to it, to sample it. I'm sleeping on the floor. I'm waking up and he's, you know what I'm saying, going to go shop to pick up records. I was with him every day. Uh, you know, other than that, uh, one thing Boss did instill in me is always have a work ethic. Yeah, definitely. So, I stayed having a day job. I worked at 
Uh, you did. Dairy so Queen, did. I worked at. Yeah, yeah, we used Wild to get free food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coo gonna always, when we pick him up, go to the studio, Coo gonna always pop by with a bag full of people shit. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, yeah. That was, that was one thing. His thing is, you know, I always work. And, you know, a lot of people, as cool as Boss was, he worked on the weekends. He, he, he did. worked. He worked at a. Um, at a, at a he was a D, at a radio station. Yeah, he like worked. A he, news was, radio he was, he was station a producer yeah. at an all news radio station. Mm -hmm. It was an AM station. On top of that, oh, really? so he didn't really have to do too much. I cut my first demo in that in that uh, at that radio <laughs> station. Each he, um the whole OG style. Album, he cut that inside of the radio station. He sneaky snuck us in. He worked. He worked from like midnight until. And when he talk, when he say he he is. Original. The other half of OG style, the original style, OG style. They was Look, a group man, that was on rap a lot. Those guys used groups. to, those guys used to fall in love and out of love with each other. They used to, they all, brothers, man, you know they was saying? always. They were brothers. When I say cat fights, but that song, that song, boys used to go off all know, the time. That's that song about I'm sitting in the Harry yeah, County yeah. Jail. That's Look, it. He that, actually called look, about Look, that, that, that song, that song didn't even. What was it called, 10B3 or 10B4? 10B3, it was, it was like a song. It's a song for, that's yeah, on song. the album, too. That song didn't even that almost, the intro it, didn't, it the almost didn't even make the album. 10B3 or 10B4, because that, that's the Harris County 1301. But he was in 10B3. He called him from 10B3 or whatever that shit was called. He yeah. called him from that seal, from that block, and Boss, and started saying like what he's seen around him, you know, and Boss recording it on the phone. Sitting in the head with kind of jail, wasting make. out, you know what I'm saying? So that shit actually was recorded. He called his nigga on the phone, because we used to always call from the phone. Nigga be squalling in the background, all kind of shit. From, especially from that, that was a gladiator tank, 10B3 or 10B4, you feel yeah. me? So that's why it was for real, like I'm sitting there. That's what he's seeing around him. That's so an actual crazy. song. Yeah, and he, and he recorded the shit on the phone good song. enough to turn it in, because Boss was a producer. One of the liveest, my nigga. He can just, liveest. you know, the liveest. A lot of people you know, don't so. know this. I'm just, I'm just. Um, and he just turned it into a. And it, let and me it just say, let me just on, say a, um, a it fun fact. It on the Cumbix album and OG style album. Just that look, sitting in there, but it's really OG style. You know what I'm saying? And that was Jay's yeah. doing, you know, and that big, big up to Lil Jay. Cause um, Jay, you know, Jay, Jay know how to market shit. That go with the Cumbix. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying? That was this big problem. visionary that he was. Mm -hmm. Um. I know how to play him. It's co-produced by DJ Premier. No shit. <laughs> a lot From of people. Star? Yes. Oh, DJ, yeah, DJ. <laughs> yes. The song is actually co-produced by DJ That's Premier. That's before me getting with them. You know. What I'm um, co-produced so, by DJ um, Premier and um, I Carlos. Know it's a fact, cause him and Boss was cool. Carlos, yeah. you know Carlos Gaza. Carlos, yeah, he's gone. Carlos, yeah, yeah. yeah. They used to fuck with um. They, the, they, they the actually, yeah, they actually did the yeah. first, the first demo. Over at Carlos's Carlos house, because yeah. Carlos was cool with Premier and Boss. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, I know this and um, Premier was like, "Yeah, we're just gonna, you know, add to Steve Miller and Woo Woo, and that's how Catch Him Slipping." And Catch Him Slipping is like one of the biggest songs that the boys actually ever did. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. one of the, the milestones, or how would you say that shit? This one of the songs that got Houston to another level. Cause the kind of group OG style was. That's what I'm saying. They from Houston. E from Fourth Ward. Boss from like the Southwest or the this the H time period. From the South to the North to the Trait. But um, them niggas was the first group to do a video in New York. You know what I'm saying? Like they on the subway, playing, running around, and have, you know them niggas in New York. Cause they New York Madison Square Garden them off the rip. But they still so H uh, time like they live. You ain't never heard them OG style catch them slipping, man. That's a classic, you know what I'm saying, as far as Ace Times history and like what part it played in there, you know what I'm saying? Right. Which you yeah. know. It was yeah. dope. It was I would just have to just say like being being around boss, not only was he a big brother, it was a learning experience. A influencer and all around great producer, man. He was a, he yeah, was a honor great to be around man. to me to be around being. boss. And um, like I said, I, I, I mean, was look, young and I look Henry to Chris like Christman, man, yeah. give him his flowers. If it wasn't for Big him, boss, a lot of man. a lot of cats wouldn't even know how to do a lot of stuff. But at the same time, hey, man, it's cool. Like Big Boss actually produced the one day you hear for um the song that UGK got. He produced that song. That's what I'm saying. That was one of the songs I first heard on Three Two Album when he came back from LA and was working with Boss now on a solo project. You feel what I'm saying? 
and three and one day was his song. He had a whole song. You know how Scarface say on oh, my son. playing oh, tricks was oh, my oh, song right. and I had a whole song. At first he had all three verses and it was hard in the abyss. <laughs> one day, you, and, but see, boss, who was doing the hook? Um, I run a Isley. Cause Boss was such a producer, he had run an eyes they going one day. Yeah, he's a sampling. Yeah. When I say a sampling genius, and then you're gone. Just like how, just like you, it was just like that. But he had run an eyes actually on the hook. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but anyway, you know, like three, um, like three and pimp, um, them niggas was partners and brothers and, and damn fools too. You know what I'm saying? So them two rolled that's together how the song like this. Ended up being on there, you know what I'm saying? Them two rolled together three, like this, man. Three two and pimp. Tell, you know tell some stories about them two and y'all ever seen like them that. Too, like well, I remember we was working on the Four Deep album, um, Another Day in the Jungle, and I had met Pimp already, and you just Bun and DJ Bird and um, Big Russ and them. Uh, I had met them like in uh, like ninety, ninety one, ninety two, like right after Tell Me Something Good that, that album had dropped. Cause I remember I called the number on the back. Cause I used to be, we used to be doing shows at a club called Kokomo's, the teenage club on the north. And um, we had won the contest there. Me and my group, Grand Theft, we was going against CIA. My partners from, um, you know, what I'm saying 802. But um, anyway, we ended up winning the contest. You know, what I'm saying my group, Grand Theft, and the guy, the the owner of the club was like, "Why don't y'all throw a show?" We was probably about 16, so maybe. Between 16 and 18, hmm. me and my the group I was with, man, my partners, Tim Grand Bird, I don't know. But um, we did we did the show, won the show, and the man was like, "Won't y'all just throw a concert at the club?" We had such a big teenage following, like in that area, because the the club was on like 1916 Kirkendall, um, by Greenspoint. But people, our teenagers used to be there from all over Houston. It was a well-known teenage club. So um, we wanted, so we threw the concert. So I, I bought the UGK tape, cause boss. By that time, I had me a boss, and boss was putting me up on a bunch of shit I ain't know. And he was like, "You need to check out these niggas that we just did a show with, OG style, like you know what I'm saying, called UGK." Hmm. And I went to the record store then, and I looked, and they had one of the motherfuckers left, and I bought it. And I was like, "Man, these niggas, th you know, I, we wasn't saying throw back then, but I was like, okay, I see why he told me that, you know what I'm saying." Um, and um, when a man asked me to do the show, I was like, well, shit, I was just thinking, like, shit, I want to call them niggas, see if they want to do it, because I want to meet them niggas anyway. We was all around the same age. I think we was probably like 16 or 17 hmm. when I met Pimp No, because we the same age. Um, so anyway, I called the number on the back, and um, I was like, yeah, I want I want to see if, if I can get UGK to come do a concert at um, a club called Kokomo's. I'll give them $100, because, you know, the man was like, Y'all could do the concert and take the money out the door. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I give y'all niggas a hundred dollars. And it was Bun B that answered the phone. So, you know, it's crazy. And we all teenagers. He like 16, 17. So Bun like, see the hell yeah, we'll do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, right, so look, so either way, so boom, we did we did it. We met them niggas came. It was Russell, Bun, and Bird. And um Russell was more like man, a hundred. We need some more. When he seen all them kids there, but I'm a kid at the same time. I'm thinking that's a great deal because I don't know how much I'm gonna get yet. You know what I'm saying? And I had to pay some more. You know, some, I was trying to just do the shit like that. So anyway, uh, that dude was like, "Nah, we ain't gonna do this shit." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so look, cause I didn't. You know what I'm saying? It was a bunch of motherfuckers there though that night, and um, he wanted some more money, and pimp, and pimp was like, "Hell nah, we gonna do this shit." You know what I'm saying? Like, cause he young and he seen. All these teenagers, he a teenager, we finna do this. So anyway, they end up doing it, I gave him the money. Long story short, like- They did it for the hundred dollars? Yeah, for Pimp and Bun to get 50 and 50 each, you know what I'm saying? I probably got like a little bit more than that myself because I had to pay Boss for something. Remember, Boss done yeah. the show to you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, this was like my, we already won the talent contest, now the man at the little teenage club want us to do a yeah, show. You're doing business like a lot now, of kids you're doing like business. It. So boom, you know, it's gonna be beneficial. Um, so we do, we do the shit, and that that was like my my um, first meet meeting them niggas like Pimp and Bun, you know what I'm saying? And me and Bun, we just me me and Bun used to be on the phone all the time, but me and Pimp, we just used to like we click, you know what I'm saying? We you know what I'm saying? So um, but anyway, three two um, as for uh, uh, the story I tell you about three, um, I I remember when they when we was working on the Four Deep album. Now this is the first Four Deep album. And, um, wait, 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 pause. Why is it just three of y'all and y'all Kyle Cody? 
it, well, it was a fourth member, but the fourth member decided he wanted to do something else in life. Like he wanted was, to go to college. He's, he's actually the guy singing on um, on Rolling 4 D. Yeah, yeah. No he's kidding. in and out. WG, yeah. But technically, the fourth he member is a out, Glock too. Nine. He can sing his ass out though. The so four, technically, right. the fourth member is a Glock Nine, right. and he's guaranteed to stay right behind. Yeah, that's something that, that was said Bust in one of the verses. Ever come up, so when he left the group. <laughs> He left the group so spontaneous that nigga had no choice but to just be creative. Like, well, what's the fourth bill? Hey, we three niggas. The fourth nigga is the strap on the floor. So that's 4D. We riding 4D. We got the strap on the floor, under the floor, man, whatever. So, yeah, um, and then, you know, when they, they came to um, Pimp about, okay, at this point, I'm just not getting into a professional group myself, which is 4D. I ain't seen Pimp in a while. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know 3-2 like that, but I know I'm not through bouts. And when 3 came to put his verse on the 4 Deep album, he on the song called Take That Motherfucker on the first 4 Deep. Um, it just so happened Pimp bring him. And Pimp now done got the deal with Jive. He got a, a, a white interpreter, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we chilling, we getting in, in our zone. And um, I just remember 3 2 going in there, going off, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, that, that was just my remembrance of them niggas at, at that point. We was all in the mix. And, I had popped in, they they was doing their thing, and it was just a good time, man. And, you know, both well, of them I mean, dudes, what y'all, what y'all was in there doing, man? How was their first time, man? Huh, doing what not? I say, how was their first time? Like, what y'all was in there all doing, man? Like, just well, at that, at that time right there, that we all was together in my life, um, me, Pimp, Boss, Cool, um, and 3-2, uh, that was the first the first 4 Deep album we were working on, another day yeah. in the jungle. So that was it, it was exciting because that was my first album, you know what I'm saying? And now since we've been a little younger, I ain't seen Pimp because they've been doing their thing. Right after they did the show with me you know, at the Teenage Club, Tell Me Something Good took out two weeks later. Hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah. Like, matter of fact, it's in Pimp book. He talk about that club they went to on the night with Kokomo. Well, whoever wrote, like that part right there in Pimp book is talking about coming to Kokomo. And he got my name in the book, too. Class one, I'm in like it's, it's like in the in the back of the book, cause we got a song on one of my solo albums that came out later with UGK on, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Kind of, um, peep your gal. But mm. yeah, man, pimp, pimp and um three two man, you know we was partners, man, you know what I'm saying? And and if it, it's an honor to have known them, cause both of them was live and they was legends, you know what I'm saying? On that note, mm. and boss was R.I.P. the boss too, and E from OG style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, so talk about the actual song, man. You know what I'm saying, Rolling Four D, man. Um, that's that. Well, like I said, we came out with another day, another day in the jungle album in nine truck in nine three and ninety three. That was through Itchy Bun. That was through Itchy Bun, Albatross and Itchy Bun, and um, we were we were officially um uh, before that supposed to be on Rap a Lot, because like I say, OG Style was with Rap a Lot, so Boss still had. Contracts. Uh, um, That's why I'm wondering and, like, and why y'all didn't sign a rap that he so close to, to it. But see, um, Jay being so real and such a businessman, he gonna, he gonna win either way it go, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and I'll do respect. Um, and, um, he he was so real that he he told Boss, well, y'all, y'all, I'm gonna give y'all a choice. Like, I could drop the album on rap a lot, but it's gonna be after like I think he had to drop too much trouble and like a couple more albums gonna take that long. was coming out that year. Dana Dane had signed a rap a lot. It was gonna, gonna take too long. He liked it the shit, yeah. but he was like, yeah. It's gonna but, take too long. Or or else if y'all want to, y'all can go and do y'all thing. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna have to get my, my money out of this shit too. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was real. I mean square business. Um, okay, I mean shit. He's Totally so so we yeah. dropped the album um because it was ready already yeah. and we got a deal and went through albatross and um itchy bun on the first album so um that's where rolling for deep comes from the original version is on that album which mm -hmm. dropped um it's called um another day in the jungle um and it was really called rolling for deep but then uh, in 94 between 93 and 94 we had went on like a little cottage tour so we thought about let's do a remix album so that's what the okay, remix but, come on. Okay, let's not the skip remix, the tour. Right. Let's not skip the tour though. Cause okay. Because this shit, I know that shit was live back in the day, man. In the night, it was live. It was still live, but it was, but it was live because it was new. It was some new shit. Help the shit. Super you know, it was yeah, it was in the in the early, in the eighties, like eighty, like between LL Drop and um, Radio, 
the Beastie Boys driving public, all this shit was live too, man. Went to went to Freak Nick. You know what I'm saying? Actually, that year we went to Freak Nick, bro. You know what I'm saying? The year y'all did the college tour, we went to Freak Nick. Okay, talk about that now. I went to Freak Nick. Well, I didn't go that time. Y'all no, you didn't because you you dropped out. But yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a dope tour for the simple mm-hmm. fact that we we only we only targeted college kids and college radio and the hood. Say we went to Alabama, which we did. We would, we would first go to the college, you know what I'm saying? Then we'll go to the college, and then from the college, okay, we'll go to the kids. Like, what's the hood out here? Yeah, I bet. Take us to the hood. So we'll go to the hood. We'll pass out free merchandise. We always had um, free singles. We had T-shirts at the time and stickers. Stickers was a, it wasn't like a staple that a lot of people used, but at the same time, it actually was a real tool that we actually, because kids is always going to stick this, you know, stick stickers everywhere. So it really worked for us. Hmm. It really worked for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and Boss was real intricate in designing the whole sticker. Really you know what I'm saying? So, so we we wind up doing like three to four or five shows up out of there. By the time we look, when you first come in, it's a wave that you first come in. You're hitting them up. They're hearing your song on the radio. They can get to talk to you. Boom. Now they want to hear more. Here comes the club DJs. Okay, well then what's, what's going on in the city? Y'all went over there to such and such hood. Hey man, we want y'all to come to the club. All right, we got your info. It's time to double back. You didn't, you didn't make you missed the double back. It was and we did that like '93, '94. Yeah. I mean, and as far as any artists asking me now, because I do a lot of artist development, how do I break? Start with college. Hmm. Yeah. It's just as simple. Don't have to pay the radio D, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to pay the DJ. Like if he was to go to a bigger city, you know what I'm saying? Say I it's okay, say I go to Atlanta. Why am I going to hot beat whatever? Now nah, I'm gonna go to the college. They're gonna play my song for free. Number one is brand new. Number two, they like it. Number three, if it's hot, it's just hot. And you the thing about too that too is when you do colleges, you service so many people at one time. Everybody's from every other state from around the, you know, from around the world. In the demographic, like age-wise, that you're trying to reach already, you just you know. come on. That's the key. See, that's what that's what made Bob such a, to, a, to me a, gen- a genius too. When he was live with what, with who he was, and he underrated as a producer and just a hip hop junkie or a person that know rap music and what he wanted as a producer and businessman that didn't just get the accolades. You know what I'm saying? He passed away too, but um. Cause, cause like we like like I say he'll produce the album he'll think we're gonna put stickers out we're gonna put this out like he was just on that shit already and think about it class like before when whenever we go into a studio and boss will call me or call you and say hey I got a song the concept is already thought of the album is already the concept of the album is already done here's the song that I want you to do mm-hmm. now he's drawing out of you what needs to fit the song that's a producer to me and like he was saying he was also good with the promotion side marketing like we gonna hit the colleges he's a market he's a, like a marketing you, said, you know what i'm saying and we gonna hit the hood you know that's why i also so love like mike jones you know mike jones is, is a marketing fuck. well that was similar to a little bit about you know what i'm saying yeah. He gonna hit the streets. He used to hit the streets. He's a marketing. Uh, yeah, he's dot yeah, bottom. Blew up in the strip club. Speaking of Mike Jones, you know, you talk about uh, the project you did with with Switch House, man. Um, well, I did um an album. I, I did an album in two thousand one. Um, where I got Michael Watts to chop it up. It's a Switch House. It's a Switch House edition classic album. It's called Class One, the One and Only. You know what I'm saying? Class One. It got like a bunch of my flows. From back in the, the 90s on there, that chop, that watch chopped up and screwed and, and blessed. And um, songs from Four Deep, songs I had done on my solo album, Once in a Blue Moon, um, produced by K-Tron. Um, and, and like some, some newer shit I had done. You know, I got um, AD, Adrian Green on there, um, J-Dog on there, Lil, Lil Mario on there, Slim on there, UGK on there. You know what I'm saying? It's chopped up by watch, the one and only. But um, it's a classic. Um, 
So yeah, you know, on, you know, on that note right there, that's where you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And why, why didn't uh, talk about like why you kind of just chose to just do a one off? You know what I'm saying? And not really stay. Uh, you mean like lead the group? Or what you mean? No, I'm just saying one-off. like with switch outs. Like it was just like I did a one off project. And- oh, okay. I thought you were talking about like why did I chose to lead for deep. Um, that was just something that um at the time that was going on like mixtapes and chopping screw. You know, like like my partner Shit. Agony Life had put a mixtape out, you know what I'm saying? The Slayer Soldiers, um, Watch Them had did it, you know what I'm saying? It was the thing going on at that time in the 2000s, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and Watch and Me was, was already pretty cool and had a mutual respect for each other and wanted to work with each other. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, he done that, he done that, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. man, you mentioned, you mentioned, uh, Leaving for deep, you know what I'm saying? What, what, why did you uh, end up leaving? Man, that was, I mean, sometimes I think that was, a, you know, I, it was a good experience as far as me stepping out and getting more independent. Like, boss wanted me to in the way and learn some things and learn try to be a businessman like he already was, you know what I'm saying? Um, it was a, also a bad thing because I think if I, if I would have stayed in the group, and we would have continued to be consistent and overlooked the little minute details and bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Um, that we would have been like at the, at the appointed place at the appointed time then. But you know, um, live and learn. We live and learn, and thank God we still got life, and we can we can be here to speak for boss and to try to represent and do God's will right now, make the shit make sense, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, you can't, I can't just be sitting around here getting depressed on some shit I should have did, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, but we did make amends and I got back with Four Deep and we did an album um, in 2004 called Foreclosure. You know, then Boss passed away after that, so it's kind of, you know, it's a thing, the album is called Foreclosure, so we got back for close, we close, you know, we, Handled out, you know, the difference and got closure on it. But, um, you know, Boss did pass away after that, but we had a good time, man. And um, that's why we always got to give it up to Big Boss, you know what I'm saying? Because he the one got the ball rolling for us as far as four deep and any other, the other shit I ever did. You know, he was the stepping stone for me and cool, I'm sure. You know I read it, man. That's what's up, man. Well, man, y'all got anything before we, uh, before we close out? Man, just to um, say, I want to shout out too, man, to the whole H Town, cause I be I be watching different shows and it's so many artists that done put in work, man, like Gangsta Nip, OG Style, Big Melo, Too Much Trouble, um, Choice, um, man, it's, it's that's what I'm saying. It's so many you can't name everybody, whether from the old or the new. So I understand that, you know what I'm saying. But it's a lot of artists, man. I wanted to shout out to everybody, man, from Jay Prince on down to Lil Mario, you know, everybody in with J Dog, you know what I'm saying? Man, you, um, you were uh, Asian Green, you know what I'm saying? That's what I was saying. You were you were you was uh, down with AD A D Green, even so close to him to where you went to That was my boy. That's my part that's my part of my fan. Yeah. yeah. Um when he went when he went to court and they sentenced him and gave him the case, I, I was I was in court with him. I was I was there. Um me and Lil Mario and Magno, we was there and his mom was there. That was an emotional day, man. So to see him out here, and when I saw him on, on, on your show, I was like, man, there it is. You know, I had talked to him already on the phone, but you know, all of that, you know, everybody looking good and he doing his thing, man. Mm. So it's good that him and J-Boy is back out, you know what I'm saying? Real talk. But yeah, man, just to shout out to everybody that's doing their thing, man. Kiki, South Walker, you feel me? The whole age, man. Mike Jones, Slim Powell, you know, Trey. Like, every, man, Ace Time Throw, man. I, I, I'm a hip hop junkie. Matter of fact, we got a show coming soon. If I ain't told you, I'm going to tell you now. It's called Cool and Class, hip, the real hip hop junkies. We got to, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be live, man. We're going to have you on there. That'll be an honor for us, you know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. sure. Um, but yeah, man, that's coming soon. But. Shout out to the whole H time, man. You know what I'm saying? That's all. To to um my nephew, um, Mr. J Jones. He finna pop out on ice on on um money train. Money train. I was finna say ice age, but Mike Jones got a new thing going on, money train. And he on the money train with Mike, you know what I'm saying, Mr. J Jones. Hmm. DJ Bass, you know. That's it, man. I already. I already what you got. Look, man, it's 
I only I only mess with a couple of new artists in Houston. I'm gonna just say Mr. J Jones and Trey Dub, Trilla Trey Dub. He's up next. These are the cats that I mess with. These are the cats that I consult. Um, Houston is very diverse, and Houston is very on top. Uh, I mean, I hope a lot of people pay attention to what's really going on. I bet. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. The podcast is classical, hip-hop junkies, and we on Donnie Houston, and this is what it is. I really, that's what it is. And man. also, on, on one last note, man, check out the album what's really going on 4D man it'll be for your benefit to go Google it, get on YouTube man. check out 4D what's really going on the album it's a classic if you ain't never heard it anything. or know anything about Houston um, hip hop and history 4D Rolling 4D is a classic man mm. it's on the album called what's really going on you know what I'm saying so check us out check out class one once in the blue moon man K-L-A-S Space O N E, man. That's me, Class One the OG, old school damn food. Check me out, man. Once in the Blue Moon, produced by K Tron. What's up? What's up? So we got some classy shit out there. What's your social media? Class One, um, the Dunn or the OG on Instagram or Facebook too. You know what I'm saying? It's Class One. My Instagram is shut down, so that lets you know uh, I'm something I'm doing. Must be doing something right. So thank y'all for shutting me down, but I'm coming back. Um, on Facebook, I'm Rodney Coolrod Brown. Rodney Brown. It's, it's just self-explanatory. I shoot music videos. I shoot movies. I'm behind the cool scenes. Cool films. I'm behind the scenes. Cool films. All right, that's what it is, man. Where are you, man? It's Donnie Houston Podcast. Yeah. Donnie Houston.